morning we are live yet again in another simao 166th session of international weekly meeting by all the medical associations i welcome you all over here uh, today we have dr kuresh mastaki and he is going to talk about myopia pandemic prevention control and latest, latest advances in the management uh if somebody wants to come on join on this session i would like to make it open for uh people to ask questions they can join on the zoom meeting 8188591572 uh just to introduce uh he's a consultant ophthalmologist in mastaki eye clinic in mumbai represent a recipient of lot of prestigious honorary award from faico awarded by all india ophthalmology society for his lifetime work in the field of coronary surgery he is a chairman for family benefit scheme of aios from 2019 to 2025 he is a national president for coronary society of india from 2017 to 2019 he has been president of international society of manual small inclusion cataract surgery from 2017 to 2019 and he has lot of awards which i can see a huge list so we have a a, a young dynamic person which i can see is been awarded as a as lot of awards so i would i ask him to sir please share the slides and enlighten us for this topic thank you sir some seeing my white beard might dispute your concept of young nevertheless uh, age is just a number <laughs> so the think, the idea of dr kk used to say dr kk used to say to us that uh, you are never young by the age you are young by the heart and you should always be smiling on that <laughs> so uh, i'll just yeah so the, the topic i have selected is the myopia pandemic it doesn't matter whether you are an ophthalmologist or or the, whichever specialist you are so this pandemic of short sightedness myopia is going to strike all of us and we need to know a little bit more about this as pure doctors itself so the prevalence of myopia has been galloping it it worsened during the covid time this is pre covid data which shows that in countries like china and in the, the, the east Uh, the prevalence is 65 percent, 81 percent in Taiwan, Singapore 75 percent, and so on. And in countries like India, USA, about one third of the patients of people are myopic or short-sighted. These numbers have only increased over time during COVID, when outdoor activities reduced and everyone was glued to their mobiles. So why does myopia progress? Myopia progresses due to two reasons one is environment or lifestyle uh, uh, and the second is genetic factors genetic factors we perhaps don't have much control on but as far as environment or lifestyle is concerned as you can see from the picture there uh, little kids are now glued on to cell phones people sit with incorrect postures hunching over their phones the number of hours of close work has increased the number of hours of outdoor activity has decreased our the, the reading material to eye distance which is very important we are going closer and closer to the uh, uh, object that we are looking at food habits is something that we tend to neglect and less of junk food and more of home food does contribute to slowing down of progress but at the core of everything i for my non eye surgeon colleagues i just want to show this one picture and try and explain this when light comes from infinity from far away there are parallel rays of light which are supposed to focus at the center of the retina retina is the film of the camera uh, if you can see my pointer here this is the, in, the this inner lining is the retina like the old film cameras and all the light should focus on the retina in the center is the fovea which is the point where 80% of our vision takes place so when you put a spectacle patient is myopic we put concave glasses here to help to focus the light on the retina it does it beautifully in the center but in the periphery it spreads the rate of rays of light 
to go behind the retina. That is called hyperopic defocus. That means the rays of light are not focused. They are focusing behind the retina instead of in front. When that happens, the brain gets confused. And it says, why is the light focusing behind? Okay, let me expand this, con this eye. Let me expand this uh, uh, retina. And therefore, it elongates the eye to pick up where the red line is in the periphery. When it elongates the eye, the eye becomes more myopic. For every one millimeter that the eye grows in length, the minus three number occurs. So we have to do something to prevent this hyperopic defocus, to prevent light from going behind the retina and instead or cause all the light to focus on the retina or in front of the retina, which is called myopic defocus. This is what we aim for. So when we give spectacles to patients, it is corrective in the sense that if I give a minus two glasses, as you can see in the middle picture, it corrects so that the light focuses on the retina in the center and the patient sees the blackboard very clearly and he's happy. But at the same time, the in the periphery, the light is going beyond or behind the retina. And ideally, we should be correcting it like in the third picture where all the light falls in front of the retina. Now, that cannot be done by regular spectacles. So again, just to repeat in different pictures, peripheral hyperopic defocus. Hyperopic means going behind the retina. In the retinal periphery, even in the absence of visual signals from the fovea, fovea is the center of the eye, can stimulate myopic progression or a growth in length of the eyeball, which is undesirable. So why, is, why am I talking to myopia to non-ophthalmologists? Um, because it's a public health problem. The increase in prevalence of myopia has led to an increase in myopia-related complications like retinal detachments, um, uh, amblyopia or lazy eye, cataracts, glaucoma. All this is more common in myopes. And up to now, we didn't have any strategy to prevent the myopia progression or onset. So it's a condition with social, educational and economic consequences. My myopia is defined as myopia equal to or worse than minus 5. Unfortunately, as I said, you get this whole host of diseases which come like myopic macular degeneration, retinal detachments, retinopathy, glaucoma, cataract. Uh, all these things occur more in myopes. So maculopathy is where the center of the retina, the fovea, which is the most crucial area. As you can see here, there's a little blood clot in the fovea. And this vision is very poor because the myopic maculopathy. Why does it occur? Because the retina is stretched because the eyeball is longer. It's like a, my white coat, which I wear at work. Because of my paunch, my white coat is stretched and it can tear. So retina can tear at places, giving rise to bleeding like this at the macula. So if your number is about minus 7 to minus 9, the chances of maculopathy increase 126 times. So such a huge difference. What about retinal detachment? Again, the same thing. Retina is pulled because the, God makes the retina in one size, but the sclera is stretched. So the retina is to fit like a like my white coat on my paunch. And if when it is pulled, it can tear. So you can get retinal holes, retinal tears leading to detachment. And the higher the minus number, like minus 15, almost 90 times more likely to develop detachment than somebody who has no number. And cataracts as well. We don't know why cataracts occur, but it occurs more commonly in myopes. And if you've got minus six or more, you're likely almost five and a half times more likely to get cataract at an early age as compared to non-myopes. So in reality, an uncorrected refractive error, imagine a child in school. He can't see the blackboard too well. He's a brilliant child, but he's, therefore his learning is hampered. He becomes an introvert. He doesn't ask questions in class. He doesn't play ball games like cricket or hockey because he can't see the ball too clearly at a distance. And therefore he remains bookish, studying all the time, withdrawn, show low self-interest, in, low interest in socializing. So a lot of other aspects of myopia, which is why all of us, as medical practitioners need to take some interest in this. How do we reduce the prevalence of myopia? 
though there are no studies from India, but we have in, in many developing countries an overemphasis on academic performance. Our child must become a doctor, lawyer, engineer. So a lot of ac academic performance and paucity of structured outdoor activity. And we, our uh, think tanks, our governments need to uh, concentrate on this and allow our children more outdoor activity and less concentration on academics. Beautiful papers by Rose et al. said that for a six-year-old uh, child, the uh, amount of near work is considered high if it is more than two and a half hours per day. And children who spend less time outdoors and more than two and a half to three hours on near work are at highest risk for development of myopia. Now, isn't this shocking news that we need so much, we need to emphasize on less time near work and the corollary paper of the greater amount of time spent outdoors. So if you spend more than two and a half hours outdoors, then the chances of your myopia progressing are less. Several theories are there. One is increased light level secreting higher amounts of dopamine, which is important for the growth of the eyeball and many theories, but it is, it is a fact no matter why it occurs, but it does occur. In China, they try to increase the illumination in the school, inside the class, but it doesn't help. It is sunlight which is helping, not artificial light. The younger the age of onset, the more is the progression. So we need to be very aggressive on young myops. So child who is, say, seven years of age, the first bar diagram that you can see, if the child is seven years of age, uh, when he first develops a minus one or a minus two, progress is likely to be almost a diopter a year. While a child who is 16, when he first develops myopia, the chances of progress would be about 0.1 diopters a year. So we need to catch myops early and aggressively treat them. So we did come out with a risk morbidity system. That means that if, the, if a parent, single parent is myopic, then you give them minus one points. If both parents are myopic, you give them minus two points. And early onset of myopia, you make minus three points. And poor eating habits, you give minus one. So far, so just like we do for several diseases, uh, myself and my optometrist, we de designed this myopia morbidity risk system to find out who is at risk. And we found that if a child has more than 10 points, like both parents myopic, doing too much near work, less outdoor activities, then it almost guarantees irreversible vision damage by the age of 55 to 60, unless we put in myopia control measures. And I'll come to those. There is a myopia progression calculator, which says that a child without management, if we don't do the steps, I'm going to say, the progress is about minus seven diopters. But the same child with the same genetic history if we put in myopia control measures, the progress will be only by up minus 3.5 diopters over a period of time. So what are the modalities we have to control myopia? There are several modalities. I'll just refer to some of them. Uh, orthokeratology. Orthokeratology is a treatment by which the child is made to wear contact lenses at night. So the child wears the contact lens and goes to sleep. The contact lens over time, over the night, it presses on the cornea and changes the shape of the cornea and thereby reduces the minus number. So then during the day, the child doesn't wear glasses and he can still see. Now, this was a method used to for children to avoid glasses, but they found by accident, just like Viagra was dis discovered by accident, they found that using this uh, technology, with contact lenses worn by the child at night, they were actually able to control myopia. And the other technology that I want to tell you a little bit about is topical atropine drops. I will come to those. And then there are some special glasses and contact lenses which can be used. So they said that if some rays are being focused at the back of the retina, then why don't we give a plus number in the in in uh, in the spectacles because myopia you give minus numbers so that some rays get focused on the uh, more rays get focused in the front so they started giving what is called executive bifocals and then they gave progressive addition lenses so that some amount of the light goes forward as well 
this works to some extent but it's it's not very effective almost 20 to 40% effective only this is another revolutionary concept these are glasses with a hole in the center so that because children myopes who are minus 1 minus 1.5 don't need reading number so in the center this is my own granddaughter wearing at 8 years of age she's got a plus 4.5 in the periphery of the glass and in the center there's a hole so she uses these glasses only when she's at home and reading and the periphery um, with the plus 4.5 uh, negates the hyperopic defocus that i told you about so she's very comfortable with this she would be very uncomfortable if she wore these glasses outdoors but only at home only while reading and only when the number is minus 1 to 1.5 we can do this the other alternative is the double d upper and lower bifocal which is not so effective and this is just a summary of the different types you can also give the children contact lenses which are multifocal but contact lenses are not very acceptable in smaller children then we came to special glasses uh, i won't go into the boring details but they are available uh, which can be used if by children even outdoors they have got myopic num number as well as hyperopic number mixed in so that the brain can decipher this they come under two technical names called dims and halt I, they are relatively expensive but they can be worn by the patient even outdoors and they can be customized to the patient's refractive error so these myopic control glasses and lenses focus all the light in front of the retina as you can see and prevent the hyperopic defocus what about atropine so atropine uh, has been researched since almost 20 to 30 years and they found that when you put atropine in the eye then the uh, 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 myopia got reduced the uh, progression of myopia got reduced by almost 77% but when you put the commercial available drops at that time was 1% atropine it caused the pupil to dilate lot of photophobia difficulty to go in the sunlight so it was given up so then they came out with lesser and lesser concentrations till they found that 0.01% atropine just put one drop at night in both the eyes and they found that the progression was only 0.3 diopter 2-3 diopters versus 0.86 if atropine was not used so it's a very elegant pharmacological method to prevent the progression of the uh, myopia and this has now been accepted uh, the Asian eyes are more receptive to atropine. In the white eyes, white skin, the Caucasian eyes, the American, the European eyes, atropine doesn't seem to be that effective. But in the Asian population, 0.01% atropine is very effective in preventing the progression of myopia. So there were landmark studies called Atom 1 and Atom 2 studies, and they used this 0.01%. And, and they found that uh, whether you use 0.1% or 0.5%, a higher percent, they still had minimum side effects. And all the groups had pro progression significantly lower than the control group, which was reported in the ATOM-1 study, which was 1.2 diopters when you didn't use the atropine. And then we got five-year results as well which showed that the, that the effect is still lasting. And, and even when you stop the uh, drops, if, you use, if you're using 0.01%, the least rebound effect. So it's not that if you stop, the myopia rebounds or comes back. So therefore, they concluded that 0.01% was the most effective concentration to reduce the progression of myopia with at least three and five year data which had come in. And then the, the Lee et al. did a meta-analysis and they proved this, that uh, atropine could significantly slow myopia progression in children, greater effects in Asian than in Caucasian or white population. In 2016, Huang et al. did a bigger meta-analysis, including 30 clinical trials with 5,400 eyes. And they found that both 1% and 0.5% had slightly higher effects, but the side effects were more of uh, the higher concentrations. So uh, the, we did an Indian study with Dr. Ramesh Kekunia from LV Prasad in Hyderabad and we came out with guidelines 
as to which children should be offered this atropine drops. And we found that it should be kids over five years of age. If there's a documented progression of at least half diapter of myopia in the past year, so some children don't progress. So you don't have to put every child of myopia on atropine drops. And of course, you must discuss with the parents because parents tend to give up because there's no, they don't see any effect. It's not like <coughs> you put uh, 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 some uh, uh, cream for your vitiligo and you see that the color coming back. So then you're motivated to continue the cream. But here, they don't see any effects. So after one or two months, they tend to stop the drops. So we need to have a thorough discussion with the parents on the need to continue the drops. Some of my patients are on atropine drops 0.01% in the last five years, doing very well. You need to exclude children with anisometropia. That means the difference in the two eyes of number. Astigmatism more than 1.5 diopters is a cylinder number because it doesn't correct cylinders. And children who have myopia because of cerebral palsy, retinopathy of prematurity, complicated patients. So we don't need to do that. And if you're presenting a paper, then we do a baseline axial length. That means length of the eye and keratometry, which is curvature of the cornea. Then we can prove how that remains unchanged over time because of atropine. So to summarize about atropine, 0.01% atropine is fairly safe for children over five years. Should be continued for at least one to two years. You can give a washout period of a year if there is stable myopia. Usually there is no rebound. But I prefer to continue it till the myopia stops progressing. You can go even up to 18 years. So the studies have done, been done only up to 16, but there are no side effects. So you can really continue even up to 18 years of age. Now I'll share with you parental concerns. And I, these are questions which non-ophthalmologists will need to answer. Family physicians and others are asked these questions by anxious parents because they can't ask these questions to the ophthalmologist who pretends to be very busy and has a big line of patients waiting. So they find that they can't ask all these questions. So I'll just try and answer these questions for you. Parent will ask you, will my child's myopia progress? And you tell them that it's very difficult to answer this because it is due to genetic factors and due to uh, uh, environment factors. Genetic factors are not in your control. But if you follow my advice, Spend more time outdoors, at least two to three hours a day outdoors for your child. Less time on indoors, only whatever work needs to be done on the computer for school, they can do. But don't play video games, don't play computer games as far as possible. So uh, the, keep a correct posture while reading. Eat healthy food. The chances of slowing down the progress are higher. Uh, you may want to talk to them about atropine eye drops and about special glasses with the teams and the HALT technology. Will my child go blind? No, uh, uh, it's not necessary that because your child has minus number, it'll go blind. We will do everything in our power to uh, reduce the progress and to halt the progress of the myopia. And, and every six months or an annual examination, will, if there are holes or tears in the retina, they can be tackled in time. Can we avoid spectacles, they ask. Uh, when the child is young, spectacles, especially the spectacles, spe special spectacles are important. You can talk to them if they are motivated about orthokeratology and wearing contact lenses at night. Um, and tell them about the possibility of laser to get rid of the number after the child's number has stopped progressing and the child is at least 18 years of age. That also answers, when can my child wear contact lenses? During daylight hours, the child can wear contact lenses when the child is old enough to look after them and can practice proper hygiene, washing his hands with soap and water before using, etc. And the nighttime contact lenses, what is called orthokeratology, has to be done by the parents. So the parents have to be motivated. Child is not expected to wear the lens at night. Parents must put it on and remove it. So if the parents are party animals and are not there for the child's bedtime, it's better to avoid orthokeratology. I explained about laser. Uh, it has to be done when the child is above 18 years of age. And it has to be done only when the number has not progressed for the last uh, one year or so. What are the chances that my second child will develop myopia? I did show you the Chavan Maskati scoring system that the chances increase to double if uh, the, both the parents are myopic. But if, both par if only one parent is myopic, 
then the chances are one in three that the second child will develop myopia. So to reiterate, lifestyle changes are important, which we, as, even as non-ophthalmologists, non-eye uh, doctors, can stress to our patients, children, child patients, minimum two and a half hours of outdoor activity, less lifestyle modification, which means less computer time, only essential schoolwork to be done on the computer. Healthy eating habits um, are more important. Uh, don't order so much food from out, which is junk. Eat home cooked meals and home fruits, fresh fruits and vegetables does make a difference. And in summary, uh, these are some of the things I talked to you about the use of orthokeratology or wearing contact lenses at night, low dose atropine, multifocal soft contact lenses, special myopia control spectacles, spending minimum two and a half hours outdoors, avoiding continuous close work and healthy food with green vegetables. These are some of the things that all of us can advise um, patients whom we come in contact with um, to slow down the myopia pandemic, which threatens the entire world. Thank you so much for your attention. And I invite you to all give myopia management some serious thought. Thank you. And I'll be very happy to answer questions. Dr. Sorab, can I ask the question? So, okay, so thank you so much for the wonderful presentation. I know people have joined a little later, so the presentation will be the share, the link will be shared in the group later on. So I also invite Dr. Chong, the chair of the, the CIMAO. Uh, Dr. Chong, uh, uh, can you give your comments? I know you're a little late today, so I don't think you would have read the presentation, but yeah. Um, thank you, Dr. Mascati. Uh, this is a topic very close to my heart because I'm a high myope myself. I'm a minus 10 diopter when I was, I think I was 16 years old, I was minus 10. I did lasing in 04. I had a retinal detachment. Uh, my father had a retinal detachment and uh, I had a retinal hole, I think about five, six years ago just as I was getting onto a plane to go uh, to come home to Singapore from Melbourne. And it was very frightening because I was deciding whether to get on the plane or not. <laughs> and I reached Singapore and there was a hole. And uh, so all the things that you talked about has happened to me. <laughs> and uh, today I'm, uh, I've had my cataracts done again. As you mentioned, my risk of cataract is much higher than, than that of a, low, a normal, my, a normal uh, person. Yes. And, uh, yeah, I had both my eyes done, and uh, all I cared well, about was to get a monofocal lens to correct Absolutely my myopia. Right. That's more important to me than anything else because I was blind from the age of, uh, I think I was blind from the age of six. I think six or seven, I had myopia. Yeah, yeah. So that's why, and it's it's the progress is really galloping. The number of myopes we are detecting now is not funny at all. So we all need. I mean, it cannot be tackled by eye surgeons alone. That's why. I wanted to have this discussion with everyone. So everyone has to join hands to at least push patients to get the correct treatment in time. I remember I remember my myopia was uh, one after a year from 6 to, to 16. <laughs> because you got it exactly early, the progression was faster. Exactly what I said in my slide, yeah. Yeah, exactly one after a year. So uh, also very interesting because the ATOM studies for myopia, atropine, were all conducted by the Eye Center in Singapore. Yes, a lot of them. I know them personally. The, I do. I do. I, I have been in touch with them both at the, the SNEC as well as the um, the Singapore uh, General Hospital SGH. Yeah. Yeah. We are, we have a huge uh, myopia population in Singapore. That's why that that triggered this atom uh, group, the ATOM. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. You know, yes. so yes. it's a topic very close to our hearts. Our myopia rate is ridiculous. I think it's like. I can't remember young children like 50 60 percent or some ridiculous no, it's about 80 percent now uh, 80 percent yeah i think it's over 80 percent now yeah it's I there i've been correct. talking to donald Tan and the uh, john meta and the others and it's 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 yeah. so much yeah yeah donald and all the gang yeah so we all know them very well but yeah they've been quite uh, a forefront leading forefront in this area of myopia yes, and very very myopia. close friends we work together yeah yeah, because Singapore, Singapore is really a myopia city. <laughs> it's it's like Taiwan, South Korea, Singapore. These these are all very high myopic. 
all the all the tiger moms and dads. <laughs> yes, sir. They want their children. Anyway, we have a question from Dr. Bukhari. Is that right? Just now, we had a question from Dr. Bukhari. Dr. Bukhari. Yeah. Yes. Yes. yes thank please, you so sir. much, uh, Dr. Kuresh. Really, it was a nice presentation. And you know, similar in Pakistan, uh, the percentage of the myopic peoples are uh, increasing. Uh, one thing you have at the last slide was a good message changing the lifestyle. I am 67 year age, but I do not use any spectacles for the far sight and for the near sighted. I never use, I wish I should have a, a spectacles because it looks so beautiful like you. <laughs> <laughs> Can you, uh, what what other things you have mentioned in uh, uh, your uh, presentation that uh, uh, use of uh, uh, diet, what is the proper diet uh, you can uh, uh, advise our people, our generation, younger generation should use and should not use for the, uh, to develop the myopia? This is yeah, my one so question. Second question, second question related to this is that, I think, uh, is the, what are there, uh, can you uh, let us, what are different, different exercises for our eyes uh, to uh, uh, reduce the risk of uh, these uh, myopia or glaucoma or anything else? Thank you, sir. So two things, one is as far as diet is concerned, as I said, <clears throat> all our grandparents and great-grandparents had a great idea of diet. And if we just follow what their diet is and not follow the fads which are there and the dietitians who are promoting all sorts of fancy diet, I think we are okay. So even the, the fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, things which are less processed foods. So you open a packet of uh, chips or wafers, that is bad. So less processed foods and more uh, 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 natural foods. Uh, if you do that, that much that that is also fine. Less of the junk, cut down on the pizzas and the burgers um, and things like that because everything in them is uh, processed. As far as your uh, second question, which was concerned, was uh, uh, about exercises. There are no exercises as such which are proven uh, effective for the eyes. Uh, walking on the, the grass with bare feet gives you an overall good feeling and uh, releases good positive hormones in the body. But otherwise, other from that, it's not specific for the uh, eyes. So also moving your eyes in different directions, up, down. It, it's nice. We feel that if we move our hands and feet, that's exercising our hands and feet. In the eyes, the eyes are naturally moving up and down all the time and right, side to side as we see objects. So our eyes are, during our entire waking hours, we are getting proper exercise for the eyes. You don't need to follow a pencil or a pen or a finger and move it particularly from side to side. But if if it gives you joy, do it. There's no harm in, in doing things. You talked about your uh, enviable position of not wearing glasses. I know many people who do this. So I, I feel that we are we are underplaying the importance of a healthy lifestyle. Um, in our earth because we are so well educated as doctors that we only talk of medicines and surgeries but the importance of a healthy lifestyle is something that we need to propagate it is a cure or a prevention for so many diseases thank you sir thank, thank you, you so much dr bukhari for bringing this and, to the and, can, and last my last comment sir nice comment you know in pakistan and india they, there is use of lassi you know yes. that is, yes that is, I think, is a very, uh, I, that I use, I think this is, is a better for me, for my eyesight. And the second uh, exercise that I myself use, I raise my legs for five minutes and that increases the blood supply myself. It is my experience, maybe I wrong, to my eyes, to my brain, to my heart. That is, I daily use this in another way. This is another, raising my legs and uh, for five minutes every day. I think, uh, if these exercises uh, can be beneficial in the future and these diets that we use in Pakistan and India, similar diet we are using, may be beneficial for your eyesight. If, if you, uh, Because I am not an uh, eye specialist or ophthalmologist. Thank you, sir. Yeah, now, you know, the one thing, just a few things, the importance of exercise, yes, but more important, the importance of sleep. Yes. 
sleep yes. is 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 the best way to regenerate everything so we need to practice at least 7 hours of sleep in a day oh. and we so and we need to turn down our computer and um, the stimuli so uh, uh, sit, seeing a uh, watching a movie late night on netflix and then going to sleep at 1 am is extremely harmful to the eyes it's not a question of blue light and whatever yes. color light and you need anti reflective coating on glasses no just cut down eat early um, read a little bit if you want some boring book is fine listen to soft music and try and fall asleep after at least about so do a little bit of exercise after your last meal and then go to sleep by about 2 hours or so after you had your last meal don't stretch your tv viewing computer viewing late into the night these are all harmful for the eyes thank you thank you that is uh, and we say that get up early get up rise makes a man healthy wealthy and wise it's perfectly true perfectly true no, i you. just wanted to add i think my question next was coming which you have already answered but i think uh, considering the today scenario when you cannot live without a computer and you have a late working hours and irrespective whatever we can say i think doctors are always say don't smoke but end up people smoking and if you're not smoking you have a pollution to smoke so uh considering this scenario when people are going digital the yeah. use of phone ipads digital media and yeah. uh, laptops so i say all of you take breaks i i i agree that there are suppose there is a computer software programmer he's got 16 hours on the computer that's his job you can't tell him to give up that he will get a job as a sweeper in the in the place if he gives up that so we tell them that have a break that means it's called 20 20 20 that means after every 20 minutes for about 20 seconds close your eyes or look far away in the distance and then again resume we don't have to sit with a stopwatch it can be after 30 minutes it can be after 40 minutes but after at regular intervals close your eyes just gentle closure you don't have to squeeze them shut Right, just mm -hmm. gentle closure, or look far away into the distance, or get up and have a glass of water. Walk around a little bit. It helps your back also. It helps your neck also, because when you're hunched like this, your neck muscles are also tight, and you you get the back problems very fast. So all this is helped by getting up from the seat and walking around and coming back after about half a minute or a minute. That is also fine. Thank you. and do you also uh, advise any lubricant or dry uh... only if required only if required if you follow these habits you don't require the lubricant drops many people always want an easy way out so an easy way out okay i will continue to look at the computer but every hour i'll put a drop in the eye um, it's not it's it's not right everything has a side effect though lubricants are fairly safe yes we do give lubricants but we give lubricants and teach them about changes in lifestyle so that they don't need the lubricants lifelong thank you one more thing dr maskati uh what about the aret study the a r e d s study yes. about the vitamins for the eye so that is more for the not so much for myopia but that is for age related macular degeneration so the mm -hmm. age related macular degeneration study the aret one and then the aret two study Talked about the beneficial uh, beneficial effects of uh, the, uh, the amino acids called lutein, zeaxanthin, and others, most of which we get in our good fruits and vegetables. So a healthy lifestyle. You don't need to pop pills in the, the, the to help the pharma sector unless you have shares in the company. <laughs> I actually have a patient who uh, was diagnosed with um, you know a, a, a macular degeneration. Yeah, and he took broccoli every day. Every day he boiled broccoli for a year, and he went back to see his ophthalmologist after a year, and his macular degeneration actually improved. <laughs> That's what I say that we have the solutions within our reach, but we reach out to the pharma sector, unfortunately. Yes. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Can I ask one question, Chong? Yes, doctor. Good morning, doctor Akta. Yes, hello. How are you? Yeah. Please ask. I'm okay. <laughs> Uh, no, it's uh, thank you, Dr. Kureshi. It's a very, very informative uh, presentation. I'm not a ophthalmologist, but I learned so many things today. One is, what is the role of stress in eye problem? Uh, how much damage it can cause? And number two, 
when we were small, they used to grandmothers and mom used to say, go and eat carrots every day. Is there any help on that? Thank you. Yes, um, Akhtar, why the uh, role of stress is uh, deleterious to the entire body and the eye being a part of the body is no exception. So uh, uh, one of the things that it can cause straight away is dryness in the eye. Uh, dry eye because our lacrimal glands are dependent on a lot of hormones. And when we have stress, we have the bad hormones, the inflammatory cytokines which are released. And they um, have a deleterious effect. So the quality and quantity of the tears are both affected. And many of patients who are with dry eye, I go a little deeper into the history and ask them history of stress. Not directly, but ask them, are you sleeping well? Do you have anxiety? Are you, um, uh, do you get palpitations? Do you have difficulty in uh, 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 social behavior? So I, I find out these indirect evidences of stress. And I do recommend yoga for many of my dry eye patients. And that seems to help a little meditation, little calming effect. And I said, just go for long walks otherwise. But anything to to sort of detox their brain and it does um, uh, uh, tend to help. And your um, uh, second point that you made on the carrots, again, carrots are, are full of the uh, uh, good chemicals uh, which are there like lutein, zeaxanthin, uh, mm. not so much for myopia, but yes, for age-related macular degeneration. So children who've taken them are less likely to get age-related macular degenerations in when they're adults. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Thank you Chong. so much, Dr. Kurashi. Hello, Chong. Can I talk? Yes, Dr. Kasi. Was it? Dr. Was it? How are you? Please speak. Yes, I'm in the US at the moment, and it's uh, midnight over here. And uh, I just wanted to join because I saw uh, Kurash Maskati. We met last time in the SAG at uh, Dhaka. Uh, yes. If you imagine, yes, yes, yes. We've been uh, meeting quite a lot in various conferences. He's a very good friend of mine, and it was excellent presentation, uh, Maskati. I must tell you, and the uh, I mean for the uh, general public and for the uh, uh, for the uh, uh, common people, the message is uh, quite clear that uh, you need to have a. Uh, you changed lifestyle. I mean, uh, the screen time should be very less in order to uh, avoid this uh, or to manage uh, myopia in children. And outdoor activities, of course, is very important. And the 2020 uh, formula, uh, uh, it has been accepted uh, by the people that are after every 20 minutes uh, break of 20 seconds and uh, focusing on a 20 uh, uh, meter, 20 feet uh, distance object. So this is all very good uh, regarding the diet. You had, your advice is fantastic. The uh, processed food should be avoided, the natural and the junk food should not be uh, used by. And uh, like you said, uh, our four, uh, you know, uh, grandparents and uh, our forefathers used to have the uh, diets. Those are the uh, the uh, food we, we should, uh, you know, usually consume. But it's really difficult for uh, uh, children of today uh, because of these uh, junk foods, uh, they're vastly available and they are used to it. Uh, I mean, keeping them away. Uh, we, we see all this in our uh, daily life, uh, in our homes as well, that our, uh, you know, young children, they just go after the junk food. So uh, this is very important. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, as you have pointed out, and you have really, uh, you know, uh, answered uh, the questions by uh, Dr. Akhtar uh, about the carrot. Now, these are all very, very uh, good advices you have given. So all in all, it was a fantastic uh, presentation. I think we have all learned a lot. And it is really good to see you. Uh, and we may again uh, <laughs> meet some time in the Inshallah. conference. So uh, fantastic. Wonderful to see you. And thank you, Sarab, for bringing in uh, Goresh Muskati. And uh, uh, Dr. Chang, thank you very much uh, for your, uh, you know, 
ever, uh, you know, a smiling uh, presence uh, in this forum and you are keeping it alive. And thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Mm -hmm. Wasi. Always uh, kind words. And, uh, you know, um, if there are no more questions, uh, maybe we'll... I think there's one more question. There there's one, one more question. question. Yeah. yeah, there's one more question, which I think is a, is a topic itself. But I would like to have a short answer from uh, Dr. Mastagi. What about glaucoma? What about the eye pressure and how it affects on the myopia patients? Ah. Uh, the uh, myopic patients are more prone to glaucoma. It's not that glaucoma doesn't cause myopia, but myopia can cause glaucoma. So all myopes should have a regular screening for their um, uh, glaucoma as well. Um, once you reach the age of 40, every human being, whether uh, myope or not, should have an eye checkup, uh, including an eye pressure checkup annually, just like you have a sugar checkup for glaucoma, because glaucoma is a one-way street. What goes away in vision doesn't come back. Thank you, sir. I, I personally have uh, some doctor friends who have uh, lost part of their peripheral vision due to silent undiagnosed glaucoma. I actually have a few doctor friends who this has happened to. So it's, it's no laughing matter. And these are doctors themselves who had no idea whatsoever. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? If not, uh, we'll call the session to a close and we'll look forward to having Dr. Mascati back here again for another eye-related topic, if we can. And uh, I certainly was very relevant for, for me today. I haven't experienced everything that you said in your slides. <laughs> and uh, certainly in, in countries like in uh, many countries, especially where developing countries and so on, I think myopia will become a bigger and bigger problem. So yeah, probably the lifestyle and so on. Thank you very much. Any, um, any last words, uh, Dr. Mascati? No, I thoroughly enjoyed interacting with all of you. I found so many old friends on this uh, uh, chat. So that was that was uh, uh, icing on the cake. And I understand it's different time zones for everyone. So thanks everyone who tuned in and hope hope we uh, we can tackle this problem together. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Okay. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you, everyone, for Bye. joining in. And, Bye. Uh, Sorry, thank you. Thank you. Yes, Doc. Dr. Anjali, can you say something? No, no, I'm just apologize for being late. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. And I think uh, I just welcome Dr. Sajad, who's just joined in. So, Dr. Sajad, I think we are closing I'm... the session now. Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, I was busy in academic work. Sorry uh, to join late. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, next time. Take care. Bye.